way it reduces everything to normal. Does it? Yes, it does. I'm sure I'm very glad to hear it. Well, you're certainly very glacial this morning. Are you surprised? <laughs> Frankly, yes. I expected more of you. Well, really. I've always looked upon you as a woman of perception and understanding. Oh, perhaps this is one of my off days. <laughs> oh, good morning, Edith. Good morning, sir. Feeling fit? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. How's Cook? Should. You should begin every day by asking everyone how they are. It oils the wheels. Yes, sir. Would you greet her from me, please? Yes, sir. That will be all for the moment, Edith. Yes, sir. I wish you wouldn't be facetious with the servants, Charles. It confuses them and undermines their morale. Well, I consider that point of view retrogressive, if not downright feudal. I don't care what you consider it. I have to run the house, and you don't. Are you implying that I couldn't? You're at liberty to try. I take back what I said about being a good morning. It's a horrid morning. <laughs> <laughs> You'd better eat your breakfast while it's hot. It isn't. Now look here, Charles. In your younger days, this display of roguish flippancy might have been alluring. In a middle-aged novelist, it's nauseating. Would you like me to writhe at your feet in a frenzy of self-abasement? That would be equally nauseating, but certainly more appropriate. I really don't see what I've done. You behaved abominably last night. You wounded me and insulted me. I was the victim of an aberration. Nonsense, you were drunk. <laughs> drunk? Of course you were drunk. So that's your story, is it? You refused to come up to bed with me. And when I finally came down at three in the morning to see what had happened to you, I found you in an alcoholic coma on the sofa with the fire out and your hair all over your face. I was not in the least drunk, Ruth. Something happened to me last night. Something, something very peculiar happened to me. Nonsense. It isn't nonsense. I know it looks like nonsense now in the clear, remorseless light of day, but I assure you that last night it was far from being nonsense. I, honestly had some sort of hallucination. I would really rather not discuss it any further. But you must discuss it. It's very disturbing. <laughs> there I agree with you. It showed you up in a most unpleasant light. I find that extremely disturbing. I swear to you that during the sales, I was convinced I heard Elvira's voice. Nobody else did. I can't help that. I did. But you couldn't have. And Later on, I was equally convinced that she was in this room. I saw her distinctly and talked with her. After you'd gone up to bed, we had quite a cosy little chat. <laughs> and you seriously expect me to believe that you weren't drunk? I know I wasn't drunk. If I had been all that drunk, I should have a dreadful hangover now, shouldn't I? I'm not so sure that you haven't. I haven't got a trace of a headache. My tongue's not coated. Look at it. <laughs> I've not the least desire to look at your tongue. Kindly put it in again. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it is. You're frightened. Frightened? Rubbish. What's there to be frightened of? Elvira, you wouldn't have minded all that much, even if I had been drunk. It's, it's just that it's all mixed up with Elvira. We were talking too much of her last night. You know, it's dangerous to have someone very strongly on your mind when you start dabbling with the occult. 